Pretty Trades here, and I'm going to give you an owner review of the Subaru Impreza. So I've had this car about five years. It's a 2012 Impreza Sport, and I've had it for 112,000 miles, and it's a really great car. I have uh, a lot of good things to say about it. Um, I've also done a video about common problems on these cars, and it's the same as the cross dress, basically, and you can find that video up here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about too much of the common problems. If you want to see that video, you can. I'm just going to more talk about what I think of the car, what I like about it, what I dislike about it. But the things I like about the car, I like that it's probably one of the cheapest cars that you can get that is the most fuel efficient and having all wheel drive. I live in a place with a lot of snow, and so having all wheel drive is really nice to have. It's very hard to beat Subaru when it comes to finding cheap, fuel efficient, and all wheel drive. That's the best part about the car, I think. Um, the second thing that I really like about the car is actually something that people dislike about it, which is the CVT. This car, I was very skeptical when I bought it because I wasn't sure about CVTs. I had heard only kind of bad things about them, that they fail frequently, that they're kind of clunky, that they um, kind of feel like mush when you hit the pedal. But the CVT has very gr much grown on me. If I want a fun car, I'm going to buy a manual. If I want a daily driver, I'm going to buy it with a CVT. I don't want a traditional automatic. And my other car has the ZF8 speed automatic, which is known to be one of the smoother traditional automatics. And I prefer this every single day over that. The things that I like about the CVT, it's super smooth. It doesn't clunk into gear. It just changes the ratios, super smooth. And you start taking off and revving up the engine. Um, it, it does do fake shifts occasionally, and I have a, another video that I can show you here. It depends on how you accelerate. If you accelerate super fast, it basically just revs up to peak horsepower and sits there. If you accelerate slowly, it basically just comes up to about 2,000 RPM and sits there as well. If you go at a kind of a medium speed, what it'll do is it'll rev up to about three or 4,000, then it'll kind of change the gear ratios back down to 2,000. And it doesn't do that so much as a fake shift to make it mimic a traditional auto. What it's doing is it's finding a more economical power band to be in so that you're getting better fuel economy, which I really like. Another thing that's really awesome about these cars is the forward visibility is really great. Up by the A-pillars, it's very skinny and they have these small windows here to help with the visibility. A lot of cars have really large and wide A-pillars here and sometimes they have bad placement of their mirrors or just kind of very bulky mirrors and they don't have that little window and it can block a lot of your view especially when you're making turns the ergonomics are great it's everything's super simple on it everything works as you would expect it to work the blinkers are very intuitive the headlights are intuitive all the controls are very intuitive there's buttons for everything and again it's just a really comfy ride it's great in the winter and there's not much i dislike about it as far as the dislikes these are pretty minor um, one of the biggest things I dislike about it is that when I'm going down a hill, it'll want to downshift or um, put the, ratio, the gear ratio into a lower gear ratio so it revs up and it uses engine braking to slow your car. I don't have big mountains. In the mountains, that's nice because then it doesn't wear your brakes down from coasting your brakes all the way down a mountain. But I have just hills around me and so I actually have to upshift a lot when I'm going down hills because otherwise it just uses extra fuel that I don't need to use. So that's kind of one of the minor things I dislike about it. The other big thing I dislike about it is the Bluetooth is terrible. It um, doesn't connect well. It, you have to push buttons to get it to charge your phone when you're plugged into the USB ports. If you use the actual cigarette lighter, it will actually get around that so you don't have to push buttons to get it to charge your phone. So that's a little workaround, but again, it shouldn't have to be in there. One of the other things I dislike about it is it's really noisy and these cars, for whatever reason, I don't know if they just didn't put a lot of sound deadening in them. They're very noisy cars, a lot of road noise from the tires, a lot of road noise. The wheel bearings seem to constantly be going out on these things. And so they're just a rather noisy vehicle to ride in. Whenever I'm using the Bluetooth, I can't, I can't actually use the Bluetooth with my phone because it's just too loud. People can't hear me. The road noise overpowers everything else. But this car has been super reliable. In the about 60,000 miles I've owned it, I really haven't done anything other than oil changes. It's simple, it's easy to work on, it's cheap, it's cheap to maintain. And again, it's just a really nice overall 
good all-wheel drive car to have with good fuel economy and so it's hard to beat if you have any other questions you can post them in the comments if you found this helpful please subscribe because it's super helpful to me and thanks for watching